Hey, I have not put a video like this up in a while where I'm actually working on something, so I thought I'd throw one up. I'm gonna be maintaining my Grand Prix Ben Pack lift, and I'm gonna be changing the oil. I've had the lift up and running for almost a year now, and you're supposed to change the oil after the first week, but I definitely don't use this as much as a commercial grade shop, but the lift is still working fine, so if you have any trepidation about you know, whether your lift needs an oil change or not, this has been running for almost a year, and I've had no problems, so I don't expect any issues. But after the first oil change, they recommend changing the oil every year. And when I was installing uh, this lift originally, you probably recall if you saw some of my other videos, Benpack sent me some of the wrong fittings, but I contacted them and they sent me all the right fittings. So I'll be going back over this, installing those fittings. And for the oil change, I'm gonna be dropping this whole reservoir at, at once with all the oil in it and then dumping it out. I haven't seen anybody else do that yet. So I'm just gonna try it out, see what happens, and we'll learn from it. If you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing. Um, like the video if you like it. If you have any questions, just put them in the comments below and enjoy the video. For this part, I just rolled the jack over there and stacked some four by sixes on top of each other just to get some extra height out of the jack. And I didn't actually put force on it. I just put it up against the bottom of the reservoir to hold it while I took the Allen bolts out, and I'll show that. There are four Allen bolts holding this reservoir onto the pump, and mine were not tight at all. There's not much to see here. There's an oil filter, which is good to see on the return line. I did not know that that would be there, but that must catch a lot of the debris in the system, so it's good to see. And then here's the existing oil, and there's not a lot of stuff in there. Looks pretty good. All right, next step is gonna be to dump this out. Inspecting inside the reservoir and making sure there's no metal debris down there or any shavings or anything like that. It looks pretty clean. Here's the five gallon bucket of new oil. It's ISO 46 hydraulic oil and I'll be pouring it directly into the reservoir. And you can get a spigot that goes on here and it makes it easier to get it into this reservoir. I don't have one, so I'm just gonna pour it in there. And it might be challenging, but look how big that hole is. I mean, if I can't get it in there, I got some bigger problems. Look at that! It comes with its own little spigot.
just like that we got it back into place. We installed the four Allen bolts. I watched a couple other videos on this and I've heard people kind of complain about how it's hard to find what level because there's a level indicator on this reservoir. So what level you have to put, put the oil at, it's hard to figure it out. And I noticed that when I was taking mine out, this is an integrated little dipstick uh, right here on this cap. So um, this should help you out if you're trying to figure out what the level of the oil is supposed to be. Looks like I'm a little low, so I'll add a little bit more. Right at max, perfect. Now before we go a step further, you'll probably be wondering how you bleed this once you start to use it. For the GP7, that's the lift that this is, the Grand Prix GP7, this pump actually has an auto bleeder. So all you have to do is just use the lift, go up and down one to three times, the air bubbles work themselves out, and then you just add oil if the level's low after the air bubbles get blood out. For the people out there who are as obsessive as me, don't worry. I didn't forget about the fluid that's still in these lines and in the hydraulic cylinder up there. So what I'm gonna do is disconnect this return line and then bring my collector over here, run the pump, and see if we can get some of this nasty oil out of here. That, that failed. The fluid never actually returned back through the return line. And I think what's happening is, I mean, this is just my guess, is that there's not a load on the lift. So all the fluid that's going up there is just moving the piston and then it's just not returning. So I guess what I could do is I probably could like max out the height of the lift and sit there, um, you know, just feeding it fluid and then it might come back. But honestly, I'm not that concerned about the little bit of fluid in there. And relative to the volume of the system, I think it's less than 5% of the oil. And since I just changed the rest of the oil and I saw that there was a filter on the return line anyways, I'm pretty confident that the system's gonna be all right. So I'm just gonna leave the oil that's in there and abandon <laughs> this part. For the parts that are going into the pump, they're MPT. So you have to use some Teflon tape. For Teflon tape, you always just wanna go with the threads. Just like that. All right, I got the hardware all tightened up again. And then I actually had to adjust my lines, so I don't know if you saw the beginning of the video. My lines were kind of bowed out or bowed out because they were going above the rails up there. So I was able to um, disconnect those and then reconnect them because I eliminated some of the length in that line. And the last thing to do is to make sure everything works. So let's try it out. Another thing is, just because I had this lift all apart, I'll be checking these connections just to make sure everything's leak proof, especially when I have a load on the lift, because the hydraulic pressure will probably be increased. So I'll check those out and I'll check the lines up above as well, just to make sure that everything is leak proof and everything's good to go. That's how you change the oil in a lift. For my next video, I'll be posting in a couple weeks, I'm gonna modify the 400 behind me. So I'm gonna do Doug Thorley headers, I'm gonna do a Y pipe, an air intake, and I wanna see what the power increase is gonna be. I've heard absolutely legendary stuff about those components, like 25 uh, pounds of torque increase and then horsepower gains and miles per gallon increase. I just wanna see if any of the claims are right. No one's ever done it and documented it before. So this is a fourth gen V8 4Runner. I wanna see if I bolt those on, how, what are the gains that, like? Is it gonna be crazy? If it's crazy, I wanna know and I wanna be the first one to figure it out. So stay tuned, it's gonna be a cool video either way. Um, if you wanna see that, subscribe. Thank you so much for watching the video. Have a good night.